Welcome back to the show and a good Monday morning to you. While the numbers are staggering, there's no way around this, is one in two Canadians are expected to be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime. So no better time than now to meet our next guest. His name is David McGinley. He's a spiritual counselor. He's a four-time cancer survivor, if you can believe it. He calls himself a near-death experiencer, a public speaker, and now an author. He received care here in Halifax at the QE2 for the past two decades, and he's been the interfaith, interfaith counselor with the QE2's cancer care team. His new book is right there. It's called Beyond Surviving, and it offers up David's unique perspective from both sides of the hospital bed. So I've been looking forward to this one all morning as we welcome into the Red Table David McGinley. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Paul. So tell me a bit about why you for this. A lot of people, when they get diagnosed with cancer, they say, why me? But why you to be kind of the messenger to, to help people? Well, I had the, uh, the interesting privilege of having cancer four times, and that's going to change your life. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to make you ask bigger and deeper questions. First time I was 17 years old, and uh, I just dove into that quest. I studied philosophy and world religions, and my cancer kept coming back over the decades, and I learned to ask better and better questions. Mm. Uh, and then I became a spiritual counselor to cancer patients and palliative patients, and Man, that is a profound privilege that dives you deep into the material of life, and it, it just kept building in me. So I wrote a book. Right. It had to come out, and I'm so glad because um, I find this book has been receiving great feedback, supporting people, speaking to their hearts, and helping them cope with the crisis of their lives. Mm -hmm. There's a quote right at the front from uh, Dr. Alistair Cunningham, I will be recommending this book to all my cancer patients. So what are cancer patients going to get from this book, David, when they read it? There's um, a saying I have in the book, don't waste the crisis. Okay. Cancer has all this power to amplify your love and deepen your humanity and help you evolve in, in love, right? To, um, to feel your life to a completely new level. Understandably, it makes people terrified, mm. and they just want it to go away, fix me. But um, I'm hoping that the book will help them participate in their healing, uh, be a full uh, partner with the doctor and the medical team, and engage the spiritual and the psychosocial and emotional wisdom that they're wired with. Uh, because evidence shows people with a vibrant, healthy spirituality and good relationships, right, or, or able to doing the, that homework, they cope better and uh, they have less side effects and they tend to exceed doctor's prognosis when you have a, an incredibly serious uh, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. A question that's been on my mind since I knew you were coming on the show. In our family and in a lot of people's families too, one of the pieces of advice that people in my family have used is let's put this diagnosis on the back burner and live our lives. Let's not talk about it. Let's go back burner and we'll yeah. deal with it when it comes. What do you make of that strategy? That's a way to reduce stress and avoid the unpleasant um, fears, right? Including, I got through it, I don't want to talk about it anymore mm. because is that, if I think about it or talk about it, is it going to feed it? Will it come back? Um, that's a big reason why people just want to avoid it. Yeah. Uh, there's been a fantastic national uh, report put out by the Canadian Partnership Against Cancer. They, they looked at over 33,000 cases and found that the number one uh, challenge, not only when you're going through cancer, but afterwards, is physical recovery from the treatment. Eight out of 10 people find that the big challenge. Mm -hmm. And seven out of 10 people say, the emotional homework just won't let me go. I continue to worry about recurrence and wrestle with what cancer has done to me, the threat it is. Well, that's an opportunity for growth and engagement to feel your life to a new level, to repair relationships, to follow your dreams, to be authentic in who you are. Uh, let's not waste the crisis. Mm -hmm. Let's use it. Because the goal I find at the end of life is not to be good or holy, because no one's going to make, make that. <laughs> the goal is to be real and authentic. And you can use struggle and suffering and, and crisis to become more compassionate, feel your life to a whole new level, repair yeah. your relationships. That's spiritual homework. And to become love itself, right? And I don't say love as an emotion. I'm talking about love as the highest state of consciousness. Mm -hmm. That's the goal of the book, to help you become love. Imagine. Now, why do we need this kind of diagnosis as humans, though, to start to do that? 
because nothing um, kicks us out of complacency like a crisis. Right. And I'm afraid now with the new reports, one in two people will be facing cancer. So all of us are either going to be um, having cancer or supporting someone who has cancer. Right. Uh, we tend to spend a lot of energy avoiding ourselves in life. Very few of us are deeply present in the moment. So uh, that awakening usually comes through a crisis. And if it's not a health crisis, it's a financial crisis or something, we're always pushing our uh, authentic deep life away, even while we're trying to grasp for it mm -hmm. and live a happy life and a meaningful life. I'm afraid that a crisis like cancer is one of the fastest ways to accelerate that process. Mm -hmm. Interesting stuff. There's no doubt about that. Thank you very much for your time this morning. I wish I had a half an hour to talk to you, but uh, we've got to go to commercial break. The name of the book, Beyond Surviving Cancer and Your Spiritual Journey. Yeah. And this is in support of the QE2 uh, Health Sciences Center Foundation to 15% of net proceeds. Go directly to support cancer patients. Mm -hmm. There's David McGinley right there on uh, Global News Morning here at Global Halifax. Beyond Surviving, davidmcginley.com, also on Twitter and on social media as well. Thank you very much. Appreciate the time. Pleasure. In New Brunswick, they were expected to get the bulk of the...